Welcome back to Enemy Spotted Studios, your home for premier wargaming content. We're back after a cross-country move, and today we're going to be going over how to play your favorite wargames solo. Before we start, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out our web store and Patreon in the description for the most badass, modern, and near-future miniatures around. As an overview, we'll be going over how to set up a game, how to balance a game, and finally how to play a game against yourself without making it weird. I'll be using references from our own solo Spectre Operations games, Infinity of the Game, and even War Machine. Before we get specific, remember you're actually just playing a game of toy soldiers versus yourself. The main goal is to have fun. You're never going to be able to match an opponent's thoughts exactly to perfect whatever weird competitive combo you have in mind. Now let's jump into setting up a game. Depending on your game system, you may have pre-made scenarios or nothing to go off of at all. In that case, look at the history or the universe of your game. Real life, movies, video games, anything you want to set up your scenario or reason why you're playing your game. For Spectre Operations, I like to look at real life situations, hostage raids, drug busts. For Infinity of the Game, you can look at the history of the universe itself, so the battles on Paradiso or whatever. I'm a big fan of Neil Blomkamp's movies, so with our near future line of killbots, you could have some militarized police robots fighting gangsters or whatever. The point is, give yourself a reason why you'd want to be pushing toys around in a basement and then make it as fun as possible. Of course, you could always just bust out your favorite models and go to town, who cares? Speaking of, let's talk about balance. Your solo play game should never be balanced. Balanced is boring, especially when you control both sides. It's kind of like that film, you know, where the computer takes over and nukes everyone. To throw off the balance of the game and make it a little more fun and challenging, I like to come at it with a US Army op ord approach. Eye bullock nightmares aside, it actually just breaks down the force composition and anything you encounter on the way to your mission, as well as describing the overall mission for you. You're looking at blue four and op four, your own forces, opposing forces, any terrain conditions that might affect you and your mission, as well as some kind of unique situations, you know, maybe you're tired or whatever coming into it. You're basically looking at the larger aspect of the scenario and using that to balance it. So if you're doing a drug bust in the desert, you might have adverse weather, or your dudes might be tired from hauling their ass across the desert or the bad guys might know you're coming because they have intel. Use this part of the process to unbalance the game using conditions relevant to the scenario. Maybe for War Machine you don't even have a Warcaster, you're just a bunch of plucky little Russian Winter Guard. I think that's what they're titled. So it's just you and your Winter Guard, but hey, here's a snowstorm to use as cover so you can get up and hack them to bits. Use your scenarios in mind when balancing the game. Most of all, remember to make it fun. Now the part you've probably clicked the video for and sat through my voice for, playing the game. There are three ways that stand out to me when playing a solo game. You have AI rules, artificial intelligence, player versus player, and a mix of the two. AI will be fully randomized actions for the op for or opposing force. This is great for berserking enemies, scared enemies, patrolling enemies, or target selection. You can also set up kind of a random event deck. There's one that's a really great example for Spectre Operations called the Fog of War cards. I'll have a link below. Basically, you need to come up with a system that randomizes the opposing forces' actions to give yourself as much of a curveball as possible when trying to combat them. That's how you can balance the opposing force. When it comes to things like shooting at someone else while they're getting punched in the face by another model or strange things like that, you can then play the PvP element where you literally step in, put your red hat on, and play as the enemy, making it more tactically sound decisions for them. This is the most challenging way to play and takes the longest as you have to go through and pick everything for the AI to do. Or it can be really fast if you're playing loose and just kind of play against yourself and come up with some fun situations. I prefer a mixed approach where I randomize most of Op4's larger actions until it doesn't make sense. Basically patrol routes, where reinforcements will come on, um, their larger scale interactions, like maybe they decided to bug out early, stuff like that. But when it comes to actually, you know, lighting a dude up with a PKM, why would you switch targets to the dude so far away you can barely see him? That guy's just going to keep blasting away. That's where you step in and take over and be like, hey, keep blasting away. <laughs> As part of playing the game, you also have to realize when it's time for fate to intervene. This usually means something completely awesome and really fun is about to happen, like that grenade landing perfectly, or the charge actually making enemy lines. Or in Spectre situations, a car like rubber banding around between buildings before exploding and flipping over. This is the little kid part of the adult toy game where you just want cool stuff to happen. Feel free to do this whenever there are no guidelines. Just get after it, see what happens, especially in that PvP situation, or even better, maybe the patrol stumbles into your guys and now they're more accurate. Just throw a little ballistics bonus on there, whatever you need. War Machine, I don't know, your, your spells are boosted, whatever. Overall, solo play is about using your imagination 
having some fun, and of course taking badass pictures of your miniatures and sending them to me at enemiespottedstudios at gmail.com. Use it as a test bed for scenarios, your own homebrew rules, or just an excuse to throw dice around. And do not be afraid to involve other players in these AI situations. Maybe you and a friend can play co-op then and have an AI-controlled force. Thanks for watching. This has been Enemy Spotted Studios. Make sure to check out the web store and Patreon below for more ways to support us, as well as like the video and subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment describing your best solo play situation and the crazy stuff that happened. Thanks.